Okay. Hi guys, so we are going to start. My name is Heidi, I'm with Opticom. Um, we're gonna go through the presentation now. Um, shouldn't be too long. I kind of streamlined it as much as possible. I know everybody has things to do. Um, so I hope everybody's having a good day. Uh, we're gonna talk about Opticom um, and this is strictly on our industrial products today. Uh, in a month or so, probably we'll have one that goes over just our commercial line. So, um, so to start, I hope everybody can see the slide. If you have any questions, I believe there's a little question thing here. Um, I'm not excellent at uh, looking at it, <laughs> but uh, you're welcome to ask a question. And, and as I look through it, I will look through it and try to answer them for you. Um, so let me see here. So Opticom Tech, right? So we've been around since 1973. Um, I'm here in Battle Creek, Michigan, and we have a uh, office that does uh, most of our R&D. We kind of restructured a few years ago. Most of our R&D and stuff comes out of our Vancouver office, which is in um, British Columbia. So we are um, in both the U.S. and in Canada just so we can throw that out there. Uh, so here we go, we're gonna kind of jump in. Uh, experts in industrial video applications. Uh, we've been doing industrial video for a really long time. Uh, we refocused on industrial video probably about, I guess eight, nine or 10 years ago and said, hey, you know what? We've got a great product. Uh, let's, let's hit the industrial market. And we, we kind of did that. And since then we've also grown our line, uh, which we're gonna go through today, um, a couple of the, the key parts in the line. Uh, unique products, uh, that's where we do really well. Uh, we do have a lot of unique products that aren't on the market um, for really niche uh, projects and applications and things like that. So uh, that's a really good one. Um, product reliability, uh, nobody likes returns. We don't like returns, you don't like returns. So we try to put a product up that's not gonna be a return. Uh, reliability is really good. Uh, we've got really great warranties on our products uh, ranging from one to um, three and even five years on some things. So that is something to be said, especially in the industrial market, uh, that these products last a really long time. And then us, uh, customer service and support, we work really, really hard to support you, all of you um, and your customers as well. And our customer service, you can get us here, you can get us in Vancouver and chat with us. We have our tech support line, anything like that. So we, we do try really hard to service you uh, as, as best as, as possible. And then marketing, obviously we advertise, uh, we market through you. And we do advertise in trade magazines. We go to trade shows. We do uh, webinars. We do a lot of uh, marketing, uh, internet, SEO, a, a lot of different things to try to generate business and generate leads for you. Some of you have probably received leads from us in the past. If not, you know, hold on. If we get somebody, we'll, we'll send it over to you. So that's kind of who we are. So here's our products, which is the, the obviously the meat and potatoes of everything that we do. So we're going to start with our stainless, stone cam stainless steel dome camera. So I've got one here and I just pulled it out of my package. I can't find my demo, so I actually pulled this off the shelf here. So this is one of them. I just kind of wanted to take them out so you can see the size. That's why I'm on the video today, so you can see. It looks in the picture like it's this massive dome camera, but it's really not. This still has the plastic on it and the bubble wrap in there. I wasn't going to take it apart. but uh, So it's analog, HDTVI switchable, or we also have IP. So with that, uh, here's the analog version, I think. This one's analog with the camera. HD uh, TVI switchable. So this one's got a BNC connector as well as the 2.1 millimeter flying lead connector for this. The IP version obviously has the RJ45 and then it has the lead coming out of it for power. So it is PoE or you can power it locally at the site. So the analog version is 700 lines. The HD TVI version is going to be a 1080p high definition and our IP version is like a 2.3 megapixel on that. So high definition all around. These are uh, Viracopal on the domes. Um, they're AISI SS316 stainless steel housings, which means they're bacteria resistant. So it's great for food processing, uh, meat processing, beverage processing plants, anything like that with stainless steel. Another application that we find with these, because they are really small and aesthetically pleasing, they work really well when you get into like high-end hotels or just high-end areas where they just want something that looks a little bit nicer than the plastic dome or the vandal dome that has the typical uh, plastic or, or heavy-duty housing on it. So that's just another little market that you can go into with these. The stainless steel bullet camera I have somewhere. Sorry, I've got products all over my table here. So this is one of them, right? This one's the CCO6 HV36F. We have a few different options with this. This particular one is analog. Again, that corrosion resistant and bacteria resistant. All of our stainless steel are both corrosion and bacteria resistant. So which makes them great for chemical plants, pharmaceutical plants, uh, ferries, boats, port authority, anything where you're gonna get the salt in the air, things like that where you're gonna have corrosion. They are IP67 waterproof, dust proof. And this particular one has um, 15 LEDs. So if you look at this, I don't know if you can see it very well, but my camera screen has disappeared on me. There it is. Uh, 
you can see, I'm gonna put you in really close. These aren't typical LEDs, right? So this particular one is an IR array and it's got a little, I'll show you the ends of it. So here's again, the analog and the 2.1 millimeter lead, right? But then it's also got this little remote control and um, it twists. Right, so it's adjustable. So what this one does is it actually puts out a white light. So it's a light LED, it's not an infrared LED. Uh, it puts out a white light in front of the camera that can be adjusted for a wider or a more narrow view. So it's basically a flashlight built on. So we have a lot of people that use this in mining applications, right? So when they're down in the trenches, right? Down in the, in the mines and things like that, they've got a light right in front of that camera that's lighting it up so they can see. So it's a really cool, again, a niche product. Uh, that that hopefully you've got some people that can uh, do something with it, um, pipes, things like that. So uh, different different ideas. So it just makes it a little bit more unique than the typical stainless steel camera. Uh, moving right along here, we have got the uh, explosion proof camera, right? So here's the big one, it's kind of heavy. So this is it. It is our this particular one is a CCO3 IP2 MVFIR. It's quite a name on it. Uh, this one's put into the explosion proof housing, right? We've got the LEDs. It's got a rubber ring that actually pushes up against the glass. I've had this demo for years. Um, I think this might have been our first sample we ever got in. So um, it doesn't have it, but the, all the other ones go out with a little rubber ring right here. So anyone that is familiar with infrared knows that if you don't have that ring pushed up against the glass, you get a glare on it. So uh, that is why that is there. So it's infrared uh, 2.3 megapixel, which means it's 1080p uh, high definition. HD, TVI, and analog versions of this camera are available as well. Uh, they come in a fixed or varifocal lens. They're all CSA, FM, ATEX, IEC approvals, which is really important both in the US and in Canada. This particular camera goes to a negative 40 degrees Celsius and it is IP66 waterproof and dustproof. Here, just so you can see, is our other one. And if I hold them both up, you can kind of see the difference on them, right? So they're a little different in size. Right, so this IP one's much bigger, IP chipsets are bigger than typical board camera um, analog or TVI chipsets. So this one is the TVI unit. So again, TVI has that B and C connection, right? Don't forget that it will not work on an analog system. You still have to have something that'll do a TVI system. So the B and C connection and then the 2.1 millimeter lead, and this will do, again, that 1080p high definition on it. And it's infrared, as you can see with all the LEDs in there. So, then we go to our industrial CCO4 camera, which this one is right here. This one you can see right here. Uh, it's got the mount that's pictured right here. And if you look on the screen, I'm kind of circling where it is. You can see the rubber grommets. So this is a vibration camera. So this is an industrial heavy duty vibration camera. So it works really well for wood processing aggregate plants like quarries and things like that. They can put them on the conveyors. It can get hit with rocks. I mean, you know, don't bash it with a sledgehammer, but it can take a, a beating, right? You can all the vibration, it's gonna last long term. So factory bypass, a lot of guys put them on a the line. We do a, a ton of these go into sawmills uh, just because of all the vibration. Anything that's a, a really rugged environment like that, it works really well. It's the IP67 waterproof and dust proof, which means it's also great for mining, water and waste plants, wood processing, again, the biomass and things like that. And there's probably a, a whole other array of applications out there that you can put this. So this is one of our go-to cameras. So anytime we talk about an industrial project or an industrial thing going in, this is kind of the products that we lead in with our CCO4 and then our CCO2, which we're gonna talk about next. These are our lead-in products because they cover a lot of different facilities versus our explosion proof, which is really a specialized camera that you're gonna go into a facility and maybe sell one to eight of these cameras, but then you're gonna sell a whole bunch of the CCO4s with it and maybe even some of our commercial line with it as well to make a complete system. But this is our, our lead-in camera that you'll probably sell the most of in the IP world. And then we've got our CCO2, which anybody who's familiar with Opticom, you're probably familiar with this camera. I have them right here. So here is our analog version. The gray one is the analog version. And this one, is a uh, 2.9 millimeter. That's what I was checking on here. It has the lens size on it. So lots of lens sizes. These are all fixed lenses as well as that CCO4 is a fixed lens. The reason we do that is because these are high vibration cameras. And if you speak with any facility or plant that has high vibration, the number one problem they have with their varifocal is it constantly goes out of focus. So these guys are always running up there and refocusing, refocusing. So we do fixed lenses, but we have a lot, a large range of lens sizes so that you can kind of fit it for each application. Now one of the perks of this camera and our, here's our yellow one, right? So the, the gray one is the analog and this is the yellow one, which is the HDTVI 1080p over coax. 
So one of the purposes of the site, you can see this is a really small camera. So you've got guys that will mount this on machinery, inside of machinery, underneath conveyors and things like that. Because of the size, it makes it really versatile and a lot of people can use it. So it's IP68 waterproof, dustproof. Uh, it's got titanium on the, on the housing, uh, machine mountable, again, wood processing, aggregate plants, uh, factories, biomass, things like that. So anything in, in that range. It also has an extreme temperature range. So negative 76 degrees Celsius to 140 degrees Celsius. No, Fahrenheit, this is all Fahrenheit, sorry. It's negative 76 to 140. So that's, an, uh, I think it's negative 70 to 70 Celsius, yeah. So, uh, so all kinds of things. We've got them in uh, steel mills, right, where it's looking at the, the melting. And what we did when we did this is we tested it and we said, wow, it'd be really cool to be from this range to that range. And we never tested it till, till it died. So the highest rating we have on the CCO2 right now is 210 degrees Fahrenheit. We've never had anybody tell us anything more than that, but we did have a steel mill a few years ago say, hey, we've got it here and it stays at 210 right there and that camera's doing great. So again, that's another application that you could go into. Uh, the mining, the water waste plants, again, wood biasing, uh, wood processing biomass. We've got a lot of people that have put these cameras on boats for years underneath, right, to look at fish or to, I don't even know what they're looking at, but to look at stuff, right? So they're, they're definitely submersible. It's a good quality camera on that, uh, the titanium alloy housing. And this is the camera that can take a beating. If you've ever seen our video, we have a video of a truck rolling over it and you pull it out, the housing isn't crushed or anything like that. So it's a really, really heavy duty camera. And that's again, so we have it in analog and the TVI, and then we've got the CCO4 version I just showed you, and that's our IP networking version of that camera. So moving on to that, so when you get into different facilities and industrial sites, sometimes they don't want to record, right? They're looking to put, you know, four cameras, nine cameras, whatever, on one line so that their operator can watch the entire process. They're literally looking just to split the screen on a monitor so they can watch this process. So that's where you go with our QS4-8, which is our analog quad splitter. So that's going to split your screen into two, four, or eight um, pictures on a screen. Or you can go into our SVD 2400, which I see I have 24,000. It is 2400 on that PowerPoint is what it should be. So that, that is the same thing. That's one of our DVRs, but what we do is we offer it without the hard drive so that people that don't want to record, you know, they're not paying the extra money for a hard drive. So that's available in a four, eight, 16 channels, and that's a hybrid. So if you're doing TVI cameras, then you'd want to go with the SVD 2400 so you can integrate again analog and HDTVI both have BNC connectors but they are two different signals okay so analog is an analog signal HDTVI is a digital signal so if you take a TVI camera like my yellow TVI camera or any TVI camera and plug it into an analog monitor it will not work it will roll the screen you will just see rolls on the screen so it's really important that if you've got a customer talking about hey I want high def that you make sure that you're switching everything in their facility or selling them new things that have the hybrid so that it can accept the TVI. Our DVRs will do analog and TVI, which is great and convenient, um, or you need to go to a monitor that does strictly TVI, which that's on here and we'll talk about that as well. So I'm looking at the question thing. If anybody has questions, just pop it on there. Um, so again, this is part of that. I think I already kind of covered it. Industrial recording. So this is the, yeah, the SVD2404. One of the perks of the SVD2404 and all of my 2400 series DVRs and my NVRs for that case is they do a frame by frame slow play, playback and a freeze frame. So if they've got a hard drive in there and they've recorded, which I typically try to tell people to do that just for troubleshooting and things down the road when they're putting it on the line, right? So say you're an aggregate quarry or wherever, right? And they've got stuff on the conveyor and something jams up. Well, if they've got it recorded, they can go back. And the frame by frame slow playback means they see one frame and then the next image and the next image so they can really see what went wrong, how it went wrong. So it's excellent for troubleshooting. Uh, we've got HDMI and BNC output on that SVD2404, which gives different, you know, obviously uh, into different monitors you could do with that. And then we've got our network video recorder. So all of our network cameras uh, in our commercial network line and then our NVRs are H.265 compression. So what that means is that my network video recorder with that compression, you can take four two megapixel cameras and they will record as if it's only two two megapixel cameras, right? So it splits it in half. So that means your hard drive is not going to be eaten, eaten up as fast. So I can do the equivalent of four four megapixel cameras is the same as recording eight four megapixel cameras. Does that make sense? I don't I don't know if it does. But basically, it cuts your record time in half. So if you need a two terabyte hard drive on an H.264 compression NVR, on my H.265, you only need a one terabyte hard drive. That might be a little better way to explain it. 
it auto detects our uh, products, loads them right up, right? So it's available on a 4, 8, and 16 channel, as well as a 32 and a 64 channels um, that are non-POE. My 4, 8, and my 16 are POE. Typically, when you're getting into 32 and 64 channel NVRs, they've got POE switches everywhere, so it makes it a little easier. We can go up to 48 terabytes of hard drive storage. Um, I can't tell you how long that is because it depends on you know what, what cameras. If you've got eight megapixel cameras or four or two or whatever you have on there. So those are a really great option, a super user-friendly GUI. So we've got the interface set up kind of like a Windows 10. So instead of going in and it's the old school, like the, you know, like the block letter writing from the computers in the 80s, right? So this is set up like a Windows 10 interface. It's super easy to navigate. There's images and um, like it looks like apps on there basically. So it's really good. I highly recommend that you check it out. Uh, we've got them in a lot of facilities and they work really, really well. All of our NVRs and our DVRs can be networked together. So if you've got a facility that has an analog system and they want to upgrade part of it to an IP system, what you do is you say, hey, your analog system's good. We don't need to replace that right now, right? So you just throw one of our DVRs in there and then you put in their, all their IP and NVRs in there and we can actually cross them together so they can view both their DVR system and their NVR system as one cohesive system across the board. So that's a really great feature because some people aren't looking and I'm not a fan of telling people, hey, rip out all 30 analog cameras and buy new ones, right? So I'm all about let's integrate that with this and then as we need to replace the other ones, we can do that. So all of our NVRs can be networked together with our DVRs or just NVRs or just DVRs, however you want to do it. So that's a really great, great selling feature to go into a customer and, and tell them, hey, we don't have to redo all of this. I tell people all the time and they come in, hey, I want to do this and that. I'm like, look, you don't have to redo it all. If you want to redo it all, I'll sell it to you, right? But there's no point in ripping out cameras that are working or things that are doing the job. So it's a really great way to integrate and, you know, um, obviously build trust as well. So next we have the monitors. So we have industrial monitors. Uh, we have a, quite a range of industrial monitors, um, 7 to 70 inches uh, test monitors, which will test analog, TBI, and IP. If you are someone who installs cameras, you need to have a test monitor. If you are a facility that you know has cameras, you need to have a test monitor. If you are a distributor that's on here, your customers need to have a test monitor. That's one of those things that they just they need to have, right? So they're up there and they're installing a camera. They can plug in the IP. They can set the IP address. They can do all those things. It just makes sense. All of our monitors are VASA standard mounting. Uh, we have a lot of different mounts for them, a lot of um, variety, ceiling, wall, double arm, single arm, all kinds of things, desk mount, all kinds of stuff. So they're all VASA standard, which means that if you decide that you want to pick up a mount at Walmart, right, it's still all going to integrate. Our popular sizes in the industrial market are the 15, 17, 19, uh, actually the 21 and a half, and then the 27 and the 32. Those are the most popular. We have a 10.4 that we do a lot with as well. Uh, that more goes into cabs for industrial sites versus on the wall. Uh, so a lot of people put them in a cab, uh, you know, a forklift or an operator cab, things like that, just because of the size of them. So then we also have our 21 and a half TBI monitor. So when I talked about the TBI camera having a different, uh, different signal, right, that digital signal, a lot of facilities just want one camera plugged into one monitor, right? And if they want HD, they have to go with a TBI monitor, or they would have to put a box in between to like a, a, one of our DVRs to trans uh, to change the signal into an analog or a HDMI or something like that. But we have a TBI camera or a TBI monitor. So you can take that TBI camera and plug it straight into the TBI monitor, and they're not going to have that rolling that I was talking about. So this one has an HDMI, a VGA input, and then of course that BNC in and out for the TBI. It is, again, the VESA standard. Uh, it comes with a monitor stand. All of our monitors come with some sort of a monitor stand on them. Uh, a lot of people do, again, mount them on the walls, so we have that available as well. Monitor vibration mounts. So this is something. So even if you've got a customer that's adamant, and I have been shocked over the years, the amount of facilities that are like, hey, I'm just going to run to Walmart, or I'm going to order on eBay like a monitor, and I'm like, all right, you know. But if they do that, this monitor vibration mount is going to extend the life of that monitor they buy, whether it's our monitor or anybody's monitor, because it's got, again, those, those rubber grommets that are built into it. And I didn't pull one of those out for this. I apologize. Um, that's going to help alleviate that constant vibration, right? Because inside the monitors are so delicate that it can be a, a serious issue. Our monitors, uh, we put into a lot of really dusty environments, and they hold up beautifully without being in housings. So that's something to be said right there. And again, they hold up through the vibration as well. So these are uh, heavy gauge aluminum construction. Uh, they have an easy adjust. It's just a, a small tilt and a small side-to-side -side swivel like this. Um, 
So it's definitely something that even if somebody's like, hey, I'm not going to do the monitor, you might want to talk to them in the high vibration areas about the vibration mount because it will definitely help. And it is the VESA standard again. So it will fit pretty much any monitor that they purchase. That is, of course, the VESA standard. Lock boxes. We've got a lot of sizes. I'm not really going to go into this. Basically, the point of this is they can stick their DVR, their NVR, their quad, whatever they want to put in there, and they don't want other people to mess with it. You stick it right in the box. It comes with the keys, comes with the fan, plugs into the wall, and off you go, right? So that's the, the main point of it is that people can't go in and change settings. Um, okay, so industrial wireless. This is a big one. We do a lot of industrial wireless because it's really hard to find good industrial wireless, and anybody who's been out there and looked for it knows how hard that is. So we've got it available in analog and for the networking IP systems. They come in a weatherproof NEMA 4 uh, enclosure, enclosure, NEMA 4X enclosure, right? So we do a lot of this for ports and on cranes, a lot of cranes, right? So the CCO2 camera or the CCO4 camera is the camera that they use for the cranes. Um, aggregate plants, right? Running cables, typically not an option there, uh, and quarries and things like that. We do a lot of other facilities that you know have hardwired systems everywhere, but they've just got this one area and they need one or two cameras, right? So it holds up really, really well. It's really reliable. Uh, you get a signal. I Honestly, I can sit here and this is on video, right? And we're recording it and we're gonna post it. I can say that I do not get wireless back ever, right? So it's good. It works really, really well. So I highly, highly recommend you kind of put that in your repertoire of what you have available to your customer. That's gonna just make their life a little bit easier. Um, moving on, we've got, oh, that's it. So that's kind of our industrial products, right? So our stainless steel, we do have a lot of different domes available on that. We do have a lot of different bullets available for the stainless steel. I didn't want to keep this too long. Um, yeah, it's already been 20 minutes, right? So I was trying to keep it kind of short for everybody. If you have any questions, give me a call. If you need literature sent out to you, let me know. We'll drop it in the mail or we'll email it to you. Uh, anything like that, just, just contact us, give us a call. We'll get it to you. Uh, so I hope that everybody has a great day. You can obviously check out all of our products at opticomtech.com. If you go to uh, toughestvideocamera.com, that has our video on the CCO2. Uh, it kind of you know, shows a lot of different environments it can go into. It's a really neat video, so I suggest you check that out. It's only 49 seconds. Uh, again, so give us a call, 800-578-1853, and I hope that everyone has a wonderful week. Thank you.